This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Education Business Meeting and Tenure Recognition for June 13th, 2023. We have got a long agenda with a whole lot of items on it tonight. Nothing more fun than talking about teacher tenure. We're very excited to be doing that tonight. So I am calling this meeting to order. Uh, first up, we'll need approval of tonight's agenda. Motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Karen. Second. Seconded by Sue. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of minutes for the May 23rd, 2023 business meeting. You've all had a chance to review those minutes. Any corrections or edits? No. Motion to approve. So moved. Moved by oh. Eleanor, thank you. Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next up is teacher tenure recommendations, and I will turn the mic over to Dr. McGowan. So first I would ask, uh, actually before you get up, just ask uh, that uh, you approve the recommendations as listed on the agenda, and then we will recognize each of the wonderful people who are here this evening for their tenure appointment. Uh, and it is our recommendation under number four, and I believe number five, that these individuals receive tenure. Each will be recognized individually in just one moment. There's a point of explanation for the audience. Normally we get to stay here, but now Christine and I are going to have to go up there, so it's just messed up my whole thing, so I apologize. <laughs> Approval of the teacher tenure recommendations as listed on the agenda as item number four. Motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Susan. Second. Seconded by Christina. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I do the teaching assistant? Yes. Uh, motion to approve the teaching assistant tenure recommendations. Moved by Eleanor? Second. Seconded by Christina. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. <laughs> yes. 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 All right. no, and congratulations to everybody. Yeah, no <laughs> We're so happy for all of you and congratulations and congratulations to your families while our board president and vice president make their way up to the podium, Mr. Davis and Ms. Lee. I would just like to thank the families as we start for all that you have given to our district and our kids and supporting your loved ones work here at Brighton. It makes a huge difference for our kids and we recognize that's a sacrifice for your family too. So we hope you are as proud of them as we are. We are very excited for this evening. Tenure represents uh, to those that are not as familiar with it, a lifelong commitment to the individual from the district, from the community, from families here, that they will work with their children for the long term. It is us saying that you have demonstrated a level of excellence that makes you worthy of a commitment for your career, that we would like you to be working with our children and our families in this community for the time that you are an educator. And it, it comes with significant rigor and evaluation and decision making along the way where your supervisors decide whether or not they're willing to stake their claim and, and make a recommendation and then every year review your performance to the point where they are asking me then to formally make the recommendation that was made to the board tonight and the board has seven elected community members to vote on that commitment uh, for your career. It is quite a milestone and an accomplishment and we're so happy for all of you and happy that you'll continue to work with our children. So we would also like to uh, speak about each of you and have you come to the podium. When I call your name, if you could come up uh, to join Mr. Davis and Ms. Lee, and they will uh, present you with a certificate after I read a little bit about you. And then Mr. Goldman is going to take a quick picture of each person um, with their certificate before you have a seat. I do know that before we break up and um, move out, uh, before, not, not that you're going to move out, but before we break up and you can uh, leave the meeting before we th go through the rest of the agenda, unless you want to stay for all of it, Mr. Goldman would love to take a picture of all the tenure recipient, recipients right up here um, in the middle. So just a, a quick housekeeping note there. Paul, Paul Olcott, could you come up to the podium, please? <laughs> Paul has his bachelor's degree in communications from SUNY Oswego, a master's in education from Nazareth College, certifications in students with disabilities grades one through six and childhood education one through six. Teaching experience as a special education teacher at school 34, the Andrews Trahey School and Genesee Community School. He's been a teaching assistant at Council Rock, French Road, and then again at Council Rock. 
recommended by Mr. Tappan and Ms. Jeffries. In their recommendation, they write, they're so pleased to recommend Mr. Paul Olcott for tenure within the Brighton Central School District as a teaching assistant. He was hired in 2019 at Council Rock. In his time there, he worked in a, in a variety of settings, including the 1214 classroom, and most recently supported a kindergarten classroom. He's flexible, kind, reliable, and a valued TA within the building. He has a love for all kids, and you can see that in his interaction with them. He enjoys getting to know each individual student and building relationships with them. Very often you can find Paul mingling around the cafeteria or the classroom he works in talking to students, giving them a secret handshake or making them laugh. Paul also worked collaboratively with our staff, working closely with his lead teacher to best understand how to support the students in that classroom. He is open to feedback and is always looking to learn. For his incredible work with our kids, his dedication to the district, we are so excited to be awarding him tenure this evening. Congratulations, Paul. Joti Mandalika, please come to the podium. Joti has a bachelor's degree in commerce from Osmania University in India, as well as a master's in accounting from Osmania University. Her certification as a teaching assistant is in progress, and she has worked as a paraprofessional substitute and a teaching assistant. I should also point out to everybody, sadly, although she is receiving tenure in this role, not so sadly for the office staff though at Fres, she is now working in a support position with the assistant principal, Shirley Flores, and is doing an incredible job. So this is joy and celebration for that role, but also just doing incredible work now in a different role also. Uh, Lashara Evans wrote this tenure recommendation in February. Uh, it is my extreme pleasure to recommend Jyoti for tenure as a teaching assistant. She brings joy and positivity to French Road every single day. Demonstrates flexibility as her schedule can change day to day or even hour to hour. She is a team player and never complains because her focus is the students that she serves. She is committed to all members of the community, teachers, staff and students. She is responsive to the needs of the school community and often strives to go above and beyond. She is dependable and reliable as well as a strong communicator. She is connected to the teachers and students she works with and is a valued team member. She joined French Road in 2014 as a substitute teaching assistant and since then has worked in a wide variety of settings from the fourth grade ICT and 12-1 classroom. She also serves as a team leader representative for teaching assistants and during meetings she is thoughtful and always looking for solutions to address challenges. When she isn't working at French Road, she is volunteering in community events and spending time with her family, which include her husband and son. She loves to spend time with family and friends. We are so proud of your work, Jyoti, for your dedication and commitment to this district. We're excited to award you tenure this evening. Brian. Tara has a bachelor's degree in political science from SUNY Geneseo, which actually seems particularly appropriate since she's a social worker now, if you think about her current political scene. <laughs> a master's degree in community social work then from SUNY Buffalo and her certification as a school social worker. She has worked as a behavior specialist at Lifetime Assistance and Bill of Hope before coming as a social worker before coming to French Road in 2018. She was recommended for tenure last spring and actually officially would have received that this past fall, but hadn't been recognized in this format and we wanted to make sure we do that. Maureen Jeffries wrote, she was very pleased to recommend Ms. O'Brien for a tenure appointment in the Brighton Central School District because she brings a professional expertise from her work prior to coming to Brighton that is invaluable to our school community. As we said, she received her bachelor's degree in political science and then her master's degree in social work, worked at Villa of Hope before coming to French Road, and demonstrating in everything that she does that she is a true team player, works with many classrooms, students, and colleagues on any given day. She's immediately able to recall important details and history of students. She is kind and flexible as she works with students, sometimes supporting them during very difficult times. 
Tara's solution focused. If students are struggling, she's willing to dig in with a team to come up with a plan that will help the student find success. As adjustments or changes are needed, Tara is there encouraging teams, reminding them of their talents and abilities, and seeing the plan through. In her work with parents, she does a great job connecting with them to share strategies they can use at home to better support the social emotional growth of their child. She completes her probationary period having demonstrated an excellence in school social work, her expertise, commitment to being a lifelong learner, and dedication to profession are all parts of this excellence. For her outstanding work with our children and commitment to the district, we're excited to award her tenure this evening. Nicole Baker. <laughs> Nicole has her bachelor's degree and master's degree in adolescence education, Spanish 7 through 12 from SUNY Oswego, and her certification 7 through 12 in Spanish as well. She was a Spanish teacher in the Auburn Central School District in Williamson before coming to Brighton. She served in 1920 and then 21 through 23. Dr. Hall recommends her for a tenure appointment as a world language teacher in our school district. Her, he says his personal classroom observations of Nicole this year and informal interactions with Nicole in past years have clearly demonstrated her incredibly caring, thoughtful, talented, professional, extremely collaborative personality. Nicole has a tremendous gift for successfully working with all kinds of learners and goes out of her way to develop positive relationships with her students and their parents. Nicole works extremely hard to ensure that all students feel success. Nicole's created an exceptional learning environment as her room is welcoming and friendly with students actively involved in the lesson on task and free to participate throughout the class period. Nicole has developed several carefully maintained routines and procedures so that her classes are organized, productive, and safe. Numerous students have shared with me that they enjoy Nicole's class and enjoy her approach to teaching them Spanish. Matt Como, her assistant principal, wrote that she's an outstanding Spanish teacher, high energy, always seems excited to be teaching Spanish and work with her students. Great sense of humor, brings laughter and fun to her lessons. Students enjoy activities Nicole plans for them while meeting the, her high expectations. They read, write, and listen to Spanish every single day. She's truly an asset to her students, the World Language Department, and to Brighton High School for her commitment to her work and her excellence in teaching our children. We're so excited for your tenure appointment. Thank you, Nicole. Brightful has her bachelor's degree and dual certification with a minor in Spanish from SUNY Geneseo and her TESOL with bilingual, bilingual extension from Nazareth College. Her certifications in special education, pre-K and grades K through 6, bilingual education extension, and ESSEL. Her teaching experience includes being an adjunct ESSEL professor at Monroe Community College, an ESSEL teacher in the Rochester City School District at school number 12, part-time itinerant ESSEL teacher, in Rochester, ELL coach, ESL teacher again, and ENL teacher then at French Road. Recommended also by Lashara Evans. Lashara wrote, Anna Brightful is a dedicated teacher and colleague. Her warmth and care for her students and her work is evident on a daily basis. Anna advocates for all students and ensures that her students have what they need to be successful. It's a privilege to teach alongside her and to know her as a human being. These are words quoted from a colleague that she collaborates with daily to serve the needs of ENL students every day. She not only serves the needs of the students, but Ms. Evans also attests to the fact that she advocates and supports all children in the classroom. Her presence in any classroom creates an enriched environment where all students can thrive. She has a passion for supporting language learners in accessing the mainstream curriculum through nurturing and high expectations. Without reservation, she was recommended for tenure. Lashara Evans also wrote that she had the pleasure of observing her instruction during a small group lesson with ENL students as well as leading a whole class lesson, the structure of the lessons were differentiated, but the approach was consistent. Consistency included encouraging discussion among students, students taking ownership over their learning and focusing on vocabulary. 
Her approach is warm and patient. She discusses the process of learning, not just completing the academics. Before her small group lesson, she takes, took the time to listen to the students share their experience with, the assi with completing the assignment. She's a thoughtful educator who's a champion for the entire community, cares deeply about Fres and the greater Rochester community. As a member of the school-based equity team, she provided an integral voice around diversity, equity, and inclusion. She's also a Brighton resident, along with her husband, two daughters, and two dogs, Cosmo and Remy. Cosmo spends quite a bit of time at school. Does Remy also? Not yet. I, okay, not, no, not yet. She's got some things to work out. Gotcha. <laughs> Poor Remy. We won't tell Remy who said it. But Cosmo's fantastic and is a Fred's favorite. Cosmo, I feel like, should be getting tenure tonight as well. Most days you'll find him walking the halls of Fred's. He's a therapy dog who's certified through Therapy Dogs International. Final quote. But on a Brightful, it was a lucky day for French Road, Brighton Central School District, and me when she chose to take on a new challenge and join Brighton as a teacher. Her expertise in English, English language learner students as well as students in general is abundant. Her gentle, calm, and personal way with students is authentic. Having the opportunity to work with Anna Brightful the last three years has truly been a gift. She has elevated me as a teacher. For your incredible work with our children and commitment to this district, we're so excited for your tenure appointment. Congratulations. <laughs> mix. Janice has an associate degree in physical studies from Monroe Community College, a bachelor's degree in phys ed from SUNY Cortland, and a master's in education from Nazareth, Nazareth College. Permit certifications in health and physical education and teaching experience as a phys ed teacher in Pittsburgh a physical education teacher at the YMCA, a health teacher at French Road and TCMS, and a health and physical education teacher at French Road and TCMS. She's also worked in our extended school year program in the summer of 2016 and 17. Ms. Evans also recommended Janice for tenure. She uh, pointed out that her uh, career, again, began in the Pittsburgh Central School District in a variety of capacities, taught middle school phys ed, a variety of health sections, coast coach varsity cross country as well, modified girls across. She was cross country ski club advisor and a wellness team leader. And then when she came to us and returned in 2016 to education, she worked in a variety of capacities within the district. They included elementary and middle school ages. French Road was grateful to now have her then as a full-time health teacher. She extends herself beyond the classroom. She's on Brighton uh, Teacher Center Policy Board, a member of the district wellness team where she's integral to the creation of the district's wellness page. Provides a valuable voice for the district's curriculum council. At French Road, she's a member of the Star Qualities, Restorative Practice, and Habits of Mind Committee, as well as the school-based equity team. Is there anything you don't do, Janice? That's the question. <laughs> Regularly attends and presents at conferences, and she'll be presenting at next year's New York State Alliance for Physical Education, Health Education, Recreation, and Dance Conference. She's a lifelong learner. She's currently attending the Internal Habits of Mind Institute to complete all three badges, taking the UBD by Design Curriculum and New York State Science and Digital Fluency course as well. When you walk into her classroom, you immediately feel a level of calmness. Her commitment to fostering a mindful environment is evident. She shares information and activities with teachers about the benefits of mindfulness and meditation. A colleague shared these words. She cares about our community, both students and staff, which is shown through participation at staff meetings, team meetings, and committees. She has proven a willingness to step up and advocate for what is best for students and staff. In my opinion, she is a positive and caring person and a great asset to the Fres staff. Constantly strives to do her best and truly lives by the adage, when you know better, do better. We are honored to see her work each and every day with our children. It is incredible, it is special, and thank you for your commitment to this community. We're so deeply grateful that you are willing to continue to do that and be awarded tenure this evening. Congratulations. <laughs> Justine Parks.
Justine has a bachelor's degree in English and Journalism from St. John Fisher, a master's in education from Nazareth, and her certificate of advanced studies in administration from SUNY Brockport, certifications in special education, school district administration, and pre-K and K through six. Her teaching experience was in ELA, earth science and special education at Newark. She was a TOSA vice principal at Norman R. Kelly School, also a teacher on special assignment building K through two and CPSC chair at Newark Central School District and a special education teacher at the middle school before becoming a sixth grade teacher at the middle school. She was also the news advisor in 2022 at TCMS. Ms. Edmonds said she's very pleased to recommend Mrs. Justine Parks for a tenure appointment as K-6 general education teacher in the Brighton Central School District. Her dedication to teaching and commitment to learning are evident in all aspects of her day. She has a solid understanding of teaching literacy and history at the middle school level. Her approach to making student thinking visible is nothing short of impressive. Upon entering her classroom, it is immediately apparent that it is the students who are actively doing the work. The routines she uses encourage all students to be engaged and clearly contribute to the intentional arc of learning. Additionally, be it through individual class, individual interactions with students, meetings with families, or the lessons that she delivers each period, Justine has a calming demeanor that allows all to feel safe and take risks in her presence. She's also involved in many aspects of the TCMS community beyond her classroom. She engages in numerous professional development offerings to ensure that her practices are current and research-based. She easily collaborates with her grade-level colleagues to share her new learning, and they have articulated how impactful her expertise has been on their own planning and the level of thinking that students are engaging in as a result. As a result, this year she volunteered to serve as her team's MTSS lead, a brand new position that allows her to focus conversations about students and identify appropriate interventions. She helps colleagues with the tracking of intervention data and advocates for students with families and her peers to ensure that each student receives the appropriate level of support. She's taken over the uh, advisor role, the lead advisor role for the newspaper club, served as a member of curriculum council and program evaluation teams and other building specific committees. Retired TCMS principal Rob Thomas recalled Justine's work as a special education teacher in his words encapsulate who she is. Justine was a calming presence in the classroom and patient with the students while still building their skills as young learners. She was collaborative with her peers and involved in many activities outside of school. Truly, Justine has embedded herself in all aspects of the TCMS community in the most positive of ways. Danielle writes that she is proud to have her as part of her TCMS team and recommend her for tenure for her incredible work with our children, commitment to this district, and willingness to keep doing such great work. We are so excited to recommend her and award her tenure this evening. Congratulations. <laughs> Katie Telly. Katie has a bachelor's degree in communications disorders from Boston University and a master's in speech language pathology from the University of Texas, Austin. She has professional certifications in speech and language disabilities. Her teaching experience as a speech language pathologist includes time in the Boston Public Schools, Union Hill Elementary, Clinical Associates, Finger Lakes, School of the Holy Childhood, Stepping Stones, and Presence Learning. Then as a speech language therapist at Fres and Brighton High School, and then at Council Rock. She also was an extended school year speech teacher in 2022. Mr. Tappan writes a tenure recommendation for Katie Telly, explaining that she brings a talent, deep knowledge, experience, and brightness to our school community within her role as a speech language pathologist. She's a wonderful pathologist who has been a perfect fit to round out the talented speech team. She brings a joy to her work and love for her students that is beyond compare. She has quickly made an impact on the Council Rock community for both students and her colleagues. Her persistence and can-do attitude leaves no stone unturned for the students that she supports. She is diligent in her research of best and most current practices on some of our most challenging caseloads. She has an incredible way of working with her students to empower them, providing them with the lifelong skills that will be necessary for future communication. <laughs> students feel cared for and willing to take the risks that are often necessary to make the growth that they need to make. She's an incredible team player, working well with the many different providers that she collaborates with within her interdisciplinary teams. 
To Mr. Tappan, her greatest strength lies in recognizing the needs within a particular team and adjusting to those needs to better support the student involved and the providers on the team. She's kind, flexible, and wonderful. She works with each of her students, getting to know their needs and capitalizing on their strengths. She seeks feedback, always pushing herself to remain current and on the edge of emerging research and best practices. Her dedication to her students and the profession are quite impressive. In her work with parents, she does an excellent job connecting with them to share strategies they can use at home to better support the growth of their children. Parents trust her and feel connected to her and the work that she does within the student sessions. For her outstanding work with our children and commitment to this district, we're so excited for her to be awarded tenure this evening. Congratulations. Jessica Weber. <clears throat> Jessica has a bachelor's degree in chemistry from the University of Rochester and, and a master's degree in secondary science education also from the University of Rochester. Her certifications are in chemistry 7 through 12 and general science 7 through 12 extension. Her teaching experience includes being a chemistry teacher in the Rochester Central School District before beginning with us in 2018 at uh, Brighton High School. She was part-time for a bit due to reductions in force and then became again full-time probationary teacher in 2021 at Brighton High School. Dr. Hall also is recommending uh, Jessica for this tenure appointment. He writes that she's one of the most flexible, intelligent, kind, thoughtful, and innovative teachers we have. Observations in Jessica's chemistry classes and informal interactions with Jessica in meetings and in the classroom this year show her to be professional, confident, passionate, caring, enthusiastic, and extremely reflective and collaborative. Jessica goes above and beyond the call of duty to develop positive relationships with her students and is open to working with them throughout the day. She, like many members of our science department, worked tirelessly to create an instructional environment that emphasizes individualized instruction, collaboration, and actively centered and inquiry-based learning. Jessica's classroom experience invites learning and exploration. Due to her sense of humor, kind approach, and her organized and flexible atmosphere, Jessica has developed a culture of learning where students thrive. In addition to her classroom responsibilities, Jessica is also serving as the advisor for our Pathways to Medicine Club at Brighton High School. Her assistant principal, Mr. Como, writes that Jessica makes her chemistry classroom fun. She has a great sense of humor and uses it to build outstanding relationships with her students. She's very enthusiastic about chemistry and her energy helps the students get excited about learning chemistry too. Jessica provides her students with lots of options and helps each student choose the best way to learn for them. She's an asset to her students, the science department, and Brighton High School. For your commitment to our children, your incredible teaching thus far, we're so excited that you've been awarded tenure. Congratulations, Jessica. And although this is entirely about Carl, I would like to acknowledge his mom, Marge, longtime Brighton educator here tonight also. Thank you for everything you taught him. Marge, he's doing very, very well, so thank you. <laughs> Carl is uh, being recommended for an appointment in the teaching assistant tenure area. He's a bachelor's degree in history and psychology from St. Lawrence University, education from SUNY, a master's in education from SUNY Plattsburgh, and a master of arts from the University of Rochester. He has permanent certifications in social studies 7 through 12. was a social studies teacher in the Adirondack, uh, Central School District at Cardinal O'Hara High School and, East, and in the East Aurora Central School District. He's been a teaching assistant at Brighton High School since 2019. Dr. Hall is also recommending him for a tenure appointment in this area. He's a very punctual, professional individual, has good rapport with students and staff he works with. Extremely caring and calm individual who shows genuine concern and enthusiasm for the students he works with in the Library Media Center. Howard Ennis, our library and media specialist, provided the following information. Carl possesses a positive and professional attitude, is dependable, reliable, a flexible problem solver, service-oriented, creative, possesses valuable background skills, and is well-liked and respected by students and teachers alike. These qualities, when combined with a strong work ethic, make him an outstanding library TA employee. 
Over the years, Carl has worked with a variety of special needs students as volunteers in the library. His patience and kind demeanor is appreciated and the students have flourished, growing their independence and social skills set. Carl's calming presence, warm sense of humor, background experience, and professional demeanor have been much appreciated over the years. High quality and skilled support staff are extremely imperative to a successful school library program. Thankfully, we have Carl as part of our team. We all appreciate his efforts and presence in the Library Media Center. His assistant principal, Ashley Edwards, provided the following. Carl has served as a teaching assistant in the Library Media Center for the past four years. Every interaction I've had with Carl has been a positive one. He approaches his job and students with a thoughtful and caring demeanor. He's truly an asset to his students, the Library Media Center, and Brighton High School. Carl, for your incredible work with our kids and commitment to the district, we're so excited for you to receive this tenure appointment this evening. Congratulations. Nicholas Dean. <laughs> Nicholas has a variety of uh, academic experiences through Monroe Community College and the Teaching Assistant Certification as well is pending and working through in New York State. He's been at Brighton High School since 2019 and also served as an assistant wrestling coach. Tom Hall writes that he's pleased to recommend Nicholas Dean for a tenure appointment as a teaching assistant in the Brighton Central School District. He came with a variety of prior experiences working with students, and his unique skills and background made him well uh, prepared to work in the 1214 functional skills classroom. During the time he has worked with the 1214 students, he has been extremely helpful in assisting with the coffee cart business, proven to be a strong advocate and role model for our students. Dr. Hall has found Nicholas to be very approachable, easy to talk to about kids, instruction, and specific student concerns. In addition to his teaching assistant duties, he's also, again, an assistant wrestling coach at Brighton High School. Assistant Principal Teresa Mosier said that it is her pleasure to recommend Mr. Nicholas Dean for tenure. He works in the 12-1 program, program, providing academic and social skill assistance to students with multiple learning disabilities. Nick is dependable, shows initiative, and takes pride in the work that he does. Nick is responsible for supervising students and their work experiences and monitors students coming to and from buses. He has great behavior management skills and utilizes sound judgment when dealing with challenging situations. He's an asset to students, the classroom, and Brighton High School for his incredible work in supporting the young people in our school district and his commitment to the work. We're excited for your tenure appointment this evening. Congratulations, Nicholas. concludes the awarding of our tenure certificates this evening. I just would like to reiterate what an incredible commitment this is on behalf of the district to people who have absolutely earned this honor in this moment in their professional career. We're so excited for each and every one of you and more importantly for our kids and their families who will have the benefit of your work for many many years to come. And again thanks to your families for all you do to contribute to the work here in the district. Although you're not on the payroll, you're on the payroll and we recognize that each and every day. To the kids in the audience, your parents are incredible people. We hope that you join us in being so very proud of them. They do a great job for other people's children each and every day. So thanks for sharing them. We appreciate it. If I could ask all the tenure uh, recipients to just come up uh, right in front of the screen right there so Mr. Goldman can get a picture. And your families, please grab a bite. And I know Mr. Davis will invite you to do the same, but unless you'd like to stay for the rest of the agenda, uh, it's not a bad time to probably run or slip out for your car. So.
Uh, for those who are uh, watching on TV or on tape delay, as it were, uh, we just uh, dismissed the 10-year uh, recipients, had a great uh, celebration there. We're going to jump around on the agenda just a little bit for a few minutes. I want to do a couple of procedural votes before we get to a couple of other items, so I'm not going to go exactly in order. Item 10 is approval of the 2023 bond resolution to finance the capital improvement project. I think we spent six out of the last eight meetings talking about the capital improvement projects in plural. This is more specific, but I think you all should have a pretty good sense on what we're trying to do, the jobs we're trying to get done in sort of a staged fashion. Are there any um, questions with regards to the bond resolution? Again, Lou talked to us about that in the past meeting. Motion to approve the uh, 2023 bond resolution to finance the capital improvement project. So moved. Moved by Karen. Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up is approval of school district legal counsel agreement with the Honeywell Law Firm, PLLC. You all have an awareness of that and we're able to see that agreement. Any questions with regards to that agreement? Motion to approve that uh, legal counsel agreement with the Honeywell Law Firm. So moved. Moved by Julene. Second. Seconded by Christina. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next up, we'll do the approval of the separation in lieu of Section 75 proceedings. We were briefed on that um, previous to this, um, and I, we did not have any questions at the time, so I'm going to put that one to vote right now. Motion to approve the particular separation agreement in lieu of Section 75 proceedings. So moved. Moved by Esther. Second. Seconded by Eleanor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'm going to hit... Um, approval of the corrective action plan for the internal audit risk assessment. We have seen that and uh, myself, Christina and Karen were also briefed on it again as members of the audit subcommittee. All of you have had a chance to see it. Um, Christina, Karen, I'm going to first ask you any additional comments with regards to this? No, and we'll touch on that briefly during our report on the audit committee. Perfect. Um, any other questions? Okay, motion to approve the corrective action plan <laughs> for the internal audit risk assessment. Moved. Moved by Sue. Second. Second by Julian. All those in favor? Aye. I'm just going to keep on moving down this part of it. Approval of the reserve funds plan. We have a number of reserve funds and we've had that review. We also happen to uh, hear about that and review that in audit as well. Questions in regards to the reserve funds plan? Motion to um, approve that plan as provided in your agenda. So moved. Moved by Christina. Second. Seconded by Karen. All those in favor? Um, approval of a tentative agreement with the Brighton Association of Educational Office Professionals. Do you uh, want to make a comment about that? No, just we appreciate, continue to appreciate the work, the collaborative relationship, and uh, the ability to work through and develop a working agreement that makes sense for both parties. But above all else, just an opportunity to comment on the incredible support that the Brighton Association of Educational Office uh, Professionals provides in each of the building and to all of our staff, and we just thank them for that. Great. Thank you. Any questions with regards to that tentative agreement? Motion to approve. So moved. moved by Julene. Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'm just going to keep on going. Mm -hmm. Approval of the 2022-2023 CIP construction contracts. We've had a chance to review those uh, along that theme. And we we're thankful for Lou and the buildings team for stewarding us through a number of these construction contracts. Questions in regards to any of those contracts as you had the chance to review them. Motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Sue. Second. Seconded by Eleanor. All those in favor? Aye. Um, <clears throat> my mistake here on this next one, approval of a revised 2023-2024 Board of Education meetings. There was a, a, a typo in the month of May that I didn't pick up, and I apologize for Kim on that one. Um, the motion to approve that, um, the updated revised, and it just had to do with some May dates. Motion to approve that calendar? So moved. Moved by Karen? Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. We'll do one more here. Approval of the uh, transportation contract. Obviously, uh, we use um, first student for our busing services. This is a rollover of that contract. Questions with regards to that? No. Motion to approve that transportation contract. So moved. Moved by Susan. Second. Seconded by Christina. All those in favor? Uh, in the spirit of continuing to jump around, I'm going to pivot back now to public participation. And um, it happens to be, as we are talking about tenure tonight, it occurs to me that this is someone else's uh, last board meeting. 
um, who had a tenure of 21 years here. That alone on its standby it deserves a round of applause. <laughs> We're among friends, so we all know that means Julian Gilbert, but um, we talked about this once before, and um, I don't know if we'll ever see someone provide the level and length of service that you have provided, Julian. Um, you bring compassion and passion to the work you do. You are a role model for all of us. Um, your passion projects, uh, brighten your wardrobe, brighten your food cupboard represent who you are. How can I help? Where can we help? How can we get help from others? Um, and your sort of quiet wisdom. I said to my wife the other night, just Julian has this quiet wisdom and it it just helps you learn things without making you feel stupid and that's a rare and, and unique skill, particularly when, in my case. Um, we are thankful and we thought we would have a little fun in the spirit of the Brighton Arts Department and the Brighton Athletic Department, um, a lot of those organizations have what they call paper plate awards. And they recognize, <laughs> and they recognize people um, for certain great things they do, sometimes in jest, often uh, serious and grateful for those actions. I'm going to kick it off. I have one from Martha I have to read, of course. She was unable to be here tonight. I have one or two of my own, and then we'll just work this way around. And it's possible, I don't know, it's possible there might be a couple others out in the audience who might want to get up and, and sort of say something. So this first one is from me, and I'm an artist. You won't be able to see this, Bill. But the first is who I think of, Julene. She's that guru on the top of the mountain. You go up to get wisdom, and that's Julene. That's you as a stick figure right there, Julene. The other is, this is an eye in a circle, because every once in a while I'd say something and Julene would give me an eye roll, and I'd go, oh, I didn't do that right. I didn't do that right. Something there was wrong, so I think about you in that regards. But also, um, all the time, I need one more for you, which is the Outstanding Eagle Eye Editor Award. I would review a document three times, feel great about the fact that it was in great shape, and Julie would go, hey, there's a problem on number four, and I'd go, son of a gun, how did I freaking miss that? So, appreciate that. Okay, that's a, that's a heavy mantle to bear. Wish me luck, friends, wish me luck. And this is a little bit south of us from uh, Martha Skirmamano, our dear friend. This is Hostess with the Mostess, Bandanas and Doritos. That's what I'm supposed to write. This is all. Um, she said, such fun, much love, and many thanks. So that's from Martha. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Am I doing mine next? You are. Okay, so mine has a lot on this side. I have to read it to Julene, but it's really the best cookie and challah delivery person, friend. <laughs> Um, when we needed a pickup, Julene would stop by and fill the bellies of me and my kid. And the, it's not just the food is delicious, but the presentation of the item was so thoughtful, it was hard to open it up and eat it because you just wanted to look at it. And um, always just exactly when we needed a little pick-me-up, she would bring us something. So thank you so much, Julene. Very thoughtful and very kind. So I do this for my Girl Scouts every year. So, um, Julian, I also my initial drawing was of a guru on a mountaintop, which is amazing. And the word that came up with that was wise sage. Um, and so I just gave you um, the wisdom award. And so if you look up the definition of wisdom, um, some of the attributes that someone who is wise possesses. Um, fit you to a T. The definition is you. So for your ability to contemplate and act productively using knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight. Um, you know, I also wrote for being a role model and a lifelong friend um, because it's, it's hard to find role models and the older you get, the more difficult it is, but you are a true role model and someone I aspire to be like. So we will miss you. <laughs> All right, this goes along with the theme of Julie not only feeding us, but um, feeding who we are. 
I have most likely to feed us chicken soup for the soul. <laughs> and I apologize if that's a little cheesy. <laughs> We're way past that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Your paper plates. So I had some time on my hands. <laughs> 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 Bag of jewels, apparently. <laughs> so mine is the um, the Sense and Sensibility Award, and um, one of the things that I really admire, uh, one of the many things I admire about Julian is how she just makes perfect sense about any situation that comes up in our meetings, um, but with with a dose, a huge dose of emotion and compassion. Um, which is really hard to find, um, someone who really knows their business, but uh, truly cares for each and every one of us from the bottom of their heart. So mm -hmm. from the bottom of my heart, thank you for making me feel so welcome uh, to be a part of this board when I first entered the room for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll always remember that. And um, you will be sorely missed, so mm -hmm. thank you. So I think I'm going to continue on a little bit of the food theme in terms of that for me, in ter I, I want to echo what everyone else said in terms of just being the welcoming and being the person who wants to care for and everything. So for me, it was the world's best Board of Ed mom <laughs> <laughs> with the cookies drawn in as well. And so thank you, Julian, for everything. Thank you. So. <laughs> thank you. Yep. Oh, yeah. uh, Julene, uh, from me, you have the Super Dorito Barista Award. Uh, a person for others, kind, thoughtful, caring, considerate, and humble. And wait. Oh! <laughs> That's pretty good. Thank you for always taking care of everyone. Appreciate it. Ow. From me, Julene, you get the Super Proofreader Award. <laughs> I'm going to miss all your little texts and phone calls and um, looking forward to Karen's texts and phone calls. <laughs> but it's been a pleasure to work with you and I'm going to miss you very much. I'll be around. I know you will. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I started to write the best travel companion, um, but then I remembered Allison and Lou were here. Um, so I didn't just want to do that. Um, so the best BOE travel companion and my question is where are we going next? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, I don't know how we can. Lou, you're next. So, on behalf of myself and our administrative team, I have the best boss of our best boss award. <laughs> 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 and then, and so that certainly uh, came to my mind generous, thoughtful, inspiring, amazing, caring, kind. And because of my role, I have a graph. <laughs> <laughs> it's a BOE member quality. There's the average line, and then there's Julian. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Julian, most likely to brighten your wardrobe. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it says it all. You work so hard on everything you do for our students, and it definitely should be acknowledged. Thank you. This is the all for DS DCSD community, and surrounding it are just different words that I thought of when I think of you, and they are in no particular order, but you can say them all in different ways around the circle but because of your quiet, your calm, quiet, physical, strong, focused voice, we'll be missed. Thank you. Thank you. We can go right into the audience. So I'd like to give Julene the Martha Stewart Award. <laughs> <laughs> and a very fancy oh, plate. <laughs> and again, creative cookie maker. I so enjoyed her, Julene, and my uh, hostess, hostessing together. Um, and she taught me a lot. And so, of course, we have an elegant plate. Thank you. Well, thank you for including your, some of your former uh, board colleagues and spouses this evening. We really miss it for the world. But uh, on behalf of Jean, she said, best dress. <laughs> when, I, when I told her about this last week, and Larry tipped me off, she said, oh, she's always the best dress. <laughs> <laughs> I said the quiet champion for all, yeah. and uh, I could speak for hours, you know that, about this, because, no, not about everything, you know, about <laughs> but when I think about your service to this community and to this district, I think of the quiet nature of the work and how you thought it, every time you say something, it's impactful, it means something. And I don't just mean when Kevin and you and I were in agenda meetings, 
and we were, Kevin and I, going way down the road on something, and you would be that little voice over here, hey, wait, guys, let's refocus, and maybe we ought to think more about this, and you were 100% of the time right. And I just, on behalf of uh, many of us in the community who've known you for so long, uh, Gene and I appreciate the friendship, uh, you and Barry, and the working relationship, your devotion to the community. Each and every child and family means that to you. And your work, not only within Brighton, but beyond. Uh, it won't be missed because you're not going to quit. You're going to leave and move on to other things. And thank you so much for your 21 years of devotion to the board. Uh, it has been impactful in every way. This is the award for caring about every person all the time. Julie, this is the uh, best supporter award. Um, I can't begin to tell you how many years we were on the board and you've always supported whatever stupid idea I had. <laughs> 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 uh, it, was, it was really Not good. <laughs> <laughs> Should have stayed on another seven or eight years to try to keep my own. Uh, <laughs> thank uh, you all. I didn't know about this at all until I came walking through the front door. But but you had a plate you thought it was a plate. You did. 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 I want to thank you for all you've done on behalf of Brighton, and I signed it Love Willie because that's I'm not very right. right. Thank you. Bye bye. No, no. Hi, Julie. Hi. Um, so, like a few others, I had the best hostess award uh, because I really look forward to being at your place at the end of summer. It just kind of always signified. <laughs> um, but I, I, so my plate is uh, 
Most likely to have children who are successful biologists. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. So, I've known Julie McGovern since I was a student. I, was I actually <laughs> graduated with her daughter Alyssa. Uh, so my award is presented to Julie Gilbert for excellence as a board member, theater mom, community leader. Thank you for all of your support and everything you've done for myself, my family, and all the students in this community over the years. Pass them back with the pen. Look at those names. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Julie, uh, you Thank always you. demand to speak, so we've got 10 minutes allocated for you to get on. No. No. I, I just wanted to, to say, Julie, we'll, we'll have some more opportunities um, as a smaller group to celebrate you also and tell some stories, and there are many, but they all have a very common theme to what was said tonight about caring for others and taking care of other people. The Paper Plate Awards had significance in a couple of different ways. Beyond just being a, um, a tribute to your um, uh, disdain, probably for hardware, clutter, and other things that could just get in the way around the house, uh, we thought paper plates being disposable might be a good option for you, but that perhaps they'd be a, a really easy way for you to read through and remember how deeply impactful your work has been and your friendship has been to so many of us. Uh, not just the people in this room, but way beyond. This is 20 years, 21 years of board service, of caring, of sharing, of kindness, of questioning, of proofreading. It's come up a couple times tonight. <laughs> of taking care of others in ways seen and in many, many more ways unseen. So many things that you've done for so many unknown to many people. A graduate of the district and the Ohio State University with a background <laughs> in education, <laughs> mother of three, wife of Barry, I didn't know code name <laughs> Willie. Um, active in your temple and community, consummate volunteer uh, that work in the VP department so many years ago, being I think a harbinger of great things to come for the district in terms of your work. You were a liaison to the mental health staff, all around incredible human. In addition to the fact you're just always caring for other people. And again, we'll have lots of stories to tell and I think about the, the night that I was appointed here and, and my kids, you know, Charlie Tay, his last day of high school classes, crawling around underneath this table <laughs> and you just getting a kick out of that and everybody coming over to your house afterwards. The first time you hosted Peter us at night. with a pants in his pocket, looking on the art. Yeah, 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 and Peter taking the art and uh, was plunging toilet stay at the high school, just so you know the update. <laughs> update on that. But in any case, uh, and, and well, and still enjoying it, but, but who doesn't want to leave then, right? Like wants to be a part of this place in every way possible. And you started that for them and for my, my family and so many others. Um, you know, your hosting of that annual uh, picnic that Marin mentioned, many of you know this, but was a result of Julian and Martha saying, this is not okay that Betsy's running around with a baby on her hip mm -hmm. and slugging bags of ice. And not that I was no, I thought I was helpful, but perhaps was not helpful enough. I was not home, um, that's true. <laughs> and and Julian saying this this needs to be done in a way that can be more supportive and helpful. And that really enhanced that relationship that all of us have too in terms of the board leadership team relationship, which was always so important to you. But there's this caring, there's this commitment to other people, there's this just deep sense of commitment to the community, uh, but also this intellectual curiosity. You're always growing and always seeking to grow and, and get to a better answer and seeking to understand. And that's a rare commodity in today's world where people go into most situations already knowing, and you don't. You go into it seeking to understand the other human being across from you and be better because of it and make better decisions because of it and make us better because of that as well. And above all else, an incredible Bubby, which you're gonna get to spend more time doing. So I just finished by thanking you as a friend and a colleague for everything you've given to us and our family. So thank you. Thank God. And really, it's been my honor for, for 21 years to be able to do this and to learn and to grow from all of you and to be 
able to serve our community. And I think back to the original board that I started serving with mm -hmm. and how different not only is the board, but, but the work that we're doing. And I couldn't be more proud of where we are and where we're going. And um, that's because of everybody in this room. So thank you all. Thank you for these. These are great. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to add something for public participation? I'm obligated to ask. This is where Mark and Marv evaluate your performance. No, 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 no. They were taking notes. Yeah, no, no, no. The feedback. You have 10 yes votes when you go back and check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we're going to get on to some other things on the agenda. Those that would like to stay are welcome to. Others I know have many pressing things at their homes that they need to attend to. They can go from there. Wait, wait. I just need to give you all a hug. Yeah, Julie. You will be hugged on the way out. <laughs> Wait, Mark. 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 I had a nickel for every time. Normally, you're out of your bunch of players. Nope, before, Marv. All set. No dinner, Marv. There's no dinner down there. Take some snacks, though. Yeah, there's snacks. Bye. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, I know we've jumped around on the agenda a little bit. We wanted to make sure Barry had a chance to get here. Um, but I am anxious, uh, Jeff, to hear you go through the suspension disproportionality uh, presentation. Yeah. Been um, thinking about this for a few months now, and thank you for the work you're doing on this. No problem. I don't know how I'm going to follow that, but you're not. Just you just, you just got to kick right in. This will be my Charlie Brown moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> So not to um, <clears throat> question anyone's intelligence, but I just want to review what disproportionality is so we are all, are all speaking the same language. It is an over-representation over of a group within a category. In the example I give, which is not part of our data, but an example would be if there is a certain group of students that represent only 15% of the, the district population, but they were to, they were to contribute to 80% of the discipline infractions for a specific time period. <clears throat> So what did uh, the Suspension Disproportionality Committee do? We had various stakeholders, and I would like just to say publicly thank you for all of the members that uh, took time out of their busy schedules throughout this school year to work and look through the data. Um, for this, I appreciate your time and effort. Um, what we did was we analyzed solutions, not suspensions report, which came from the uh, children's agenda. And then we also looked at our own internal data of 10 years worth of Brighton High School and 12 Corners Middle School suspension and referral data. We focused on the suspension and referral data for it to look at discrepancies between the different groups of students so that we could see if there was any, if, if our suspension um, rates were disproportionate. Um, and using all the various uh, perspectives, experiences, and research, we developed short term and long term rec recommendations for our superintendent. So our findings, our findings that we, we want to say, excuse me, our findings were that we found that our in-school and out-of-school um, students that were, been, were suspended and the referrals that were given to students, the following groups were the ones that were had, that had been disproportionately uh, suspended. Our African-American students, our multiracial students, our Hispanic students, our students living in po poverty, also known as free and reduced lunch or low socioeconomic status, and also students with abilities. We'd just like to give a note from the um, analysis from the solutions not suspension report that they did not break it down by in school and out of school. Um, it's important that uh, it's just noted so that we all understand that you'll see in the next slide our data, but um, we just wanted to make that clarification for any of our public members. So right here you will see charts from the data. Um, on this slide you have the VHS disproportionality, disproportionality data. And each of the check marks represents um, for that specific group in that, in that school year, whether they were disproportionately suspended for that school year. So as I said, these are the groups. And um, for all of them, they were disproportionately suspended for at least one, um, 
one time in or excuse me, one time in that ten year time frame. And then this is our data for TCMS. Same thing, the check mark represents whether or not that group was disproportionately mm -hmm. suspended during that school year. So we always have to ask questions, why? Um, so on this slide, you will see some of the factors that may, I like to say may because it's not definite. Um, many of these also can be connected um, with each other, so I'll go through them. Suggest subjective discipline, um, such as insubordination, disrespect, did not abide by school rules. And with this, we're talking about when, kind of like respect, everybody has a different version of what that is for them. And sometimes when you, when you have staff members um, that may not, may interpret or have different experience with different groups of kids, that's, that could be uh, one of the leading causes of it. Lack of connection with adults and overall school community. Um, I know that in my meetings with Dr. Hall and Ms. Daniel Evans, we always tell all of our students we need you to get involved in something because the lack of connection, we just were talking to some students this, uh, this morning about it, uh, creates a better school experience for students. And when students are, come to school, they don't have a connection with an adult or they don't have a connection or not involved in any school activities, it, it leads to um, some issues. Adverse childhood experiences, also known as ACEs. Essentially, this is a long term for trauma. Um, specifically when it comes to uh, the data of our district, we have, going back to the, our students that live in poverty, oftentimes when you have students that are living and coming from um, environments of poverty, you have a higher risk of ACEs. And um, for those of us that don't know, the, our, um, the demographics of our students that are living in poverty have grown tremendously in the past 10 years in Brighton, so those are some of the challenges we're facing. Um, a lack of interest in instruction, when we have students skipping class or just not showing up, um, and we just want to identify that, you know, what, what can we do to continually keep kids engaged inside the classroom so that they want to be in the classroom learning, they want to attend and uh, be around adults that they love and trust. Cultural shock um, experienced by students that are new to Brighton. Once again, myself and Ms. Edmonds, we literally in our urban suburban interviews this afternoon, we had conversations with uh, some of the students and families because our culture here, as many of us know in Brighton, is very unique. If you've only been in Brighton, you may not know, but to someone that has not always been in the school community, it's really, really unique. Um, and if you're coming from other places that have different expectations or cultural expectations, it can be a cultural shock for many of our students, uh, many of the students, especially in those demographics that we saw on the previous slides. Um, unconscious bias, traditional thinking, um, and power struggles. Um, we always talk about how the 2023 version of students is very different from previous years, 1993, 20 years ago. Um, our kids are different. The technology has changed, and you know I know our district has done a lot of work on uh, working and uh, giving professional development on um, unconscious bias. And you know sometimes, even in my own observations, there are times where adults may have a power struggle with kids, and we're always trying to work on uh, improving that. A lack of consistency and understanding with the use of restorative practices, although many of our district staff members have been um, trained in it, not all of our staff members have, and I know that there's gonna be more work uh, being put in that. And then always uh, partnerships and communications with our families, it is critical for us to do that. Uh, many of the families in Brighton, they send their kids to school, um, and no news is good news for most of them, um, but you know, we, we have to continue to work to build bridges and find new ways to engage um, families. Not that there was someone hired to do that. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so here are some of the short-term recommendations that we came up with. Um, the first is really going to the source. Um, and this is, you know, we looked at 10 years worth of data, but really starting, you know, hopefully next school year, uh, really start to focus and uh, look at the data of kids and talk to the students that are not successful and that are having uh, different various behavioral challenges and talk to them and, and asking them what their experiences are. We need to hear from the kids that are being impacted in this um, negative way so that we can put interventions in place to, to change it. And once again, I just want to throw out there some of these short-term recommendations, it, some of the work we're already doing. Um, we could do sometimes a better job of it, uh, but I, I, don't, I just want to acknowledge that it's not like we're not doing any of this right now. We are doing this, and I know that in the work and the building's levels and leadership, it does happen. 
Um, redeveloping onboarding uh, protocol for transfer students. Uh, one of the things we found in the data is that many of the students that uh, we have uh, discipline issues with are students that are not part of the Brighton um, School District, hence the shock of when other individuals are coming into the district and looking at ways that we can uh, make that transition to our district uh, in a more supportive way where we're giving students and families what they need uh, throughout that process. And like I said, we already have it, but it's something that we can continue to work on. Uh, quarterly end of year suspension and uh, quarterly and end of year suspension data reviews um, and an annual review by a district level team. And what and we do this really, really well in Brighton when it comes to academic. Um, we, we, we look at the data and we look at the students that are not doing well academically and who's doing um, and who is having challenges and struggles. But uh, and this is I know for a fact that um, Dr. Hall and Ms. Evans already have talked to our data uh, analysts to look at data and we're having the plants look through and making sure that kids are not falling through the cracks and identifying who the kids are earlier and like I said before, talking to them and putting interventions with them and their families. Um, continued alignment with VHS and TCMS. I know that Dr. Hall has been here for a while, well, so has Ms. Evans, but she in her new role working together to make sure that we are handling um, all the discipline infractions the same way and that we can learn from each other. And, it, and as students move up along our system, um, and also with my work with student transitions, we're able to learn about kids so that when they are going from one school to the next, it's not just a fresh start and we can already use some of the interventions and strategies as they move up throughout our system. Uh, all, different all alternatives to suspension when applicable. Uh, this is a case by case basis. I can speak for this personally right now. When we are in some of the uh, post hearing meetings with Dr. McGowan and some of the um, conversations that we have students and families when they do make mistakes, we do, um, it's not just about suspension, it's also about learning. And we really want to focus on um, putting that in as part of our restorative practices to look at alter alternatives so that students are, um, you know, learning throughout the process without missing instruction. And then last, I already talked about the, uh, the um, proactive communication with families and building trust. I think that that's just a huge leverage area that we can continue to grow uh, because parents are experts of their kids and the more that we can work together and that kids know that the school and their, their family were all aligned, it really helps to um, deal with some of the behavioral issues that can sometimes pop up. Because sometimes parents are out working, doing their thing, trying to support the family. Kids are at school, how's your day at school? It was great. And the kids aren't always honest when they go home and give the full truth of what's going on. And the more that we can keep that communication open, I think that would be helpful. So those are short-term recommendations. And then our long-term recommendations, and once again, similar to the short-term recommendations, um, some of these we've already begun um, or have already implemented. But we need to continue our professional development to support teachers. I know that Dr. Rio works um, really, really well at the Teacher Center on uh, being culturally responsive in the classroom and curriculum that is culturally relevant. There's a really big connection to that, you know, especially at like the high school when, you know, it's an open campus and kids have a lot of freedom. And if kids are skipping classes, we want them to, A, be able to have a trusted adult where they want to actually be in the room with them and, and learn with them. And a lot of our teachers do a great job with that. But some of our kids, it goes to that lack of connection. And then B, we want to have, um, uh, you know, teaching that is happening that is relevant to the students' lives and interests, and that's kind of a connection to the new version of kids. Sometimes our kids sometimes have to be entertained, and you have to get them engaged in moving around and working with their peers versus just, um, you know, the stage on the stage, and I know that our teachers are working on uh, doing that as we go. Uh, continued uh, review and regularly updated code of conduct to reflect the use of restorative pa uh, practices. I do know that um, in our work with uh, BOCES, we've already been planning uh, to make sure that everybody in our district um, is, is trained in restorative practices and that we are making sure that everybody um, has those th that, that set of tools in their toolbox when different um, negative interactions with students come up. Um, another one we have is explore outside organizations that can assist with the management. Um, one of the uh, big ones in our local area that some of our local neighboring districts use, the Center for Youth, um, and it's really just an organization that helps to get kids back to the classroom if they're having challenges within the classroom, working on that educational component, um, continuing to build relationships, but also giving kids support on strategies that they can use um, you know, when they are having uh, emotional, academic, or behavioral challenges. And, we, and you know, it, it comes down to human capacity oftentimes because our counselors and our administrators do an amazing job every single day working with kids, but sometimes you know, it could be, uh, it could stretch the human capacity that we have. So that was the long-term recommendation. 
Um, another one, development of student voice. I got to give another shout out to Ms. Evans. <coughs> I know just two weeks ago, there are a group of students in the cafeteria at TCMS working on being trained uh, in peer mediation. And we want our students to be a part of the solution. The more that we can get students involved um, in the process and having them also be able to work with each other. Because as we all know, oftentimes if they hear from a peer, it could mean a lot more than coming from the same old adult all the time. So we want to get students involved to work with each other and have a voice in the process, but also to hear from their experiences um, validating them and working and, and also learning because we have a lot we could always learn from our students and um, I know all of us do that every day and then last but not least uh, we have a great uh, partnership with BOCES and ReCenter and just continue to work on our own uh, individual and collective capacity to uh, just create a sense of belonging in our school community there are uh, it's an amazing community to be a part of and as you know in the blueprint where we want everybody to feel uh, welcomed and, and I feel like this, this Brighton is a community for them uh, we know that many do. We still have a ways to go with some of our students, and I think in the data you can see some of the students that have some of these negative experiences with referrals in classes or with being suspended. We want to reduce those, and uh, I feel like the more connection we have, or should not me, excuse me, our committee, the more that we, the more connection that we have within our school community, the better experience is going to be for students. So, like I said before, I appreciate all of the members of the committee that took time to look at this data. Um, I know that it can uh, be kind of tough to swallow at first, but um, I do feel like we are um, headed in the right direction, and there's always more work to be done, but I feel like if we continue to you know, push and build relationships one kid at a time, then we can uh, reduce the numbers and uh, change experiences for some of our kids. Any questions? Yeah, I just a, a comment and a question first. Um, in sort of reference to your last point, Jeff, it's not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to be the facts, and we got to look at them and figure out how we get better. So, I don't think this was easy to tackle for you and the team, but we greatly appreciate you all taking it on. My question is: You talked about getting some feedback um, from the students with regards to peer mediation, anything like that. And this might be tricky, but did we get any feedback from any of the students that were suspended just to get their perspective? And I think that could be very tricky, but I don't know if that was an opportunity also. So in, for this process, we did not speak with individual students. That was more of our, all of our experiences in working with students. Um, I know that you know every situation is individual, and oftentimes when you have an individual conversation with the kids, you are able to figure out the student or the adult or the family member, you're able to dig into the why of what, for that individual situation, what caused it. Um, so we did not speak to any students specifically. Um, I've, I've had many conversations with students along with colleagues um, over here. Um, so I, we, but for this process, we did not actually speak to any students. And that's what we put as one of the recommendations that we feel like we actually do need to hear from students and, and specifically the ones that are experiencing the challenges um, versus just any old. So we want to be intentional in who it is that we're talking to so that we can learn from them and, and have a, have a, create an environment that works for them. <clears throat> Thank you. I guess my follow-up question to that too is was there any looking at the data or information <laughs> about like a lot of this report focuses on the students and what we feel are some of the causes for the student misbehavior. Was there any looking at kind of staff or the staff responses to whatever the behavior was? So we had staff members that were part of the community or the committee, mm -hmm. but we did not specifically um, like poll or you know give a survey to BHF staff members about their experiences with uh, student discipline. Mm -hmm. um, so no, we did not do that. Okay. And my other question was: Is with the disproportionality? I know the check boxes. Did that mean that that population? Was it like any percentage higher in terms of having sanctions against them, or was there a threshold level? The threshold was 50% um, more than the majority yeah, of the black population. students compared to white students, mm -hmm. or students that are in um, students that are living in poverty versus um, families that are not, you know, general education versus students with disabilities. Thank you. No problem. I was able to take a look at a lot of the data. Thank you for keeping me in the loop as much as possible. I know I couldn't attend a lot of the meetings, but from what I was able to look at, I could see what, how much material you had to look through, how much data you had to comb through. And I thank you for 
tackling this very macro topic in such a micro level, um, and it allows us to really dig deep and hopefully, um, not hopefully, definitely tackle this problem, this issue, um, with our blueprint work um, so that we can make some real changes. So thank you and to all, everyone on the committee. Thank yeah, you. No problem. And like I said, um, it's, you know, we looked at historical data, but I think it's going to be much easier and, you know, Tom and Danielle have already begun the work of, you know, starting to be intentional about looking at data so that we can really answer a lot of the, the questions that we have, put interventions in place. Um, but thank you and I, I appreciate it. Just a few quick comments. One, great work. Great, great work, Jeff, leading this. And you've been working hard on it all year and included many people in this room, too. So thank you. And thank you for putting this together. Um, Eleanor, great question about staff and about essentially that notion of our, let's say it plainly, are people treating kids differently, yeah. right? I do appreciate that Jeff included in his um, report the factors that may lead to some of the results, mm -hmm. pointing out and just owning that notion of is there subjectivity, this idea of discipline infractions that could be subjective, insubordination, mm -hmm. disrespect, abiding by school rules. Do we view that differently with different kids, right? And that's a conversation we had several years ago, need to revisit at this point. And that really is not the calling people out and saying you are doing this because, but rather saying what are the unconscious bias, what are, the, what are be, be open to maybe it is somebody who's doing that, right? But that generally what we're saying is there's unconscious bias, we know that, we need to own that, recognize that, understand that, and then really use those numbers to have a conversation about well, why do we interpret a behavior differently from different groups of kids and understand that better, and then what do we do about that? And I really enjoy, Jeff, in your recommendations, this idea, particularly in the long term, of continued professional development to support teachers with culturally responsive pedagogy and curriculum that is culturally rel relevant and engaging, and getting at this idea of, yes, we have to think about ourselves and what do we need to, to develop. The causes, the reasons, the connections, the sense of belonging, but what is it that we should be doing differently, too? So thank you for that. I think you did a really, really great job. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks. Next up are the bids, <clears throat> and while I will read them individually, we will vote on them as a whole. There are seven, sep uh, seven separate bids up for approval tonight. Approval of cooperative bid for fresh produce supply. Approval of a cooperative bid for beverage supply. Approval of cooperative bid for bread RFB. Approval of a cooperative bid for food supply. Approval of a cooperative bid for lunch paper and plastic supply. Approval of a cooperative bid for ice cream and frozen desserts. That's my favorite. Approval of a cooperative <laughs> bid for athletic supply. Motion to it. You've all had a chance, obviously, to receive those, um, uh, review rather, those uh, bids. Are there any questions? What is RFB again? Sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> nope. Brad, RFB, Lou, can you speak to that directly? <laughs> <laughs> I've stumped. Frozen yeah. debate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <Bill>. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Now with the RFB question resolved, any questions? Any other questions over regards to these seven bids? Nope. No. Motion to approve the seven bids as a whole. So moved. Moved by Julie. Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, you almost said seven bids. <laughs> yeah. Seven yeah, bread. Bread. yeah. <laughs> Are they okay. <laughs> On to the reports. Uh, first, the financial reports. We had both the treasurer's report and the financial report. You all have had a chance to review. This one must be approved. Any questions in regards to either of those reports? No. Motion to approve the financial reports as presented. So moved. Moved by Eleanor? Second. Seconded by Karen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I am pleased to have uh, tonight with us rising Yay. senior Layla Chen. The meetings aren't normally like this. It's been a little bit different tonight, but we appreciate your patience. We know you're in a busy time of year. Before I begin, I just want to share some words from the last board um, ed representative as she couldn't be here tonight. Um, she wanted me to tell you that your kindness has not gone unnoticed and it has truly meant the world to Eliza. The compassion and encouragement that you have extended to her have served as a constant source of strength as she embarked upon this remarkable journey. Your unwavering devotion to the betterment of our community has left an indelible mark on her, one that she will carry on for years to come. It is also important to acknowledge the broader impact of your actions by fostering an environment of unity and compassion. You have undoubtedly strengthened the bonds that hold us together. Aww. Aww. That's sweet. Okay. Um, so as for academics, 
the junior and senior award ceremony were held on the 6th of June. <coughs> and Regents and Local Exam Week are, is beginning tomorrow. And AP Physics C and chem AP Chemistry students will be going to Council Rock and French Row to teach the students some lessons. As for sports, um, Maya Torres Panzer, a sophomore, went to nationals for rowing at the beginning of June. Mm -hmm. um, Will Vitali and Car Carly Gabel, which are both ninth graders, and Hannah Devine, a tenth grader, went to the New York State Track and Field State Competition. As for clubs and extracurriculars, the choir groups Brunettes, Crazy Pitches, and Macapella held their annual Acapocalypse concert, which was extremely <laughs> successful, and they also had past alum make guest appearances. Key Club and Ties volunteered at the eighth grade bonfire. Swedish and the Bait team went to Louisville, Kentucky for nationals during the last week of May. And Trapezoid just printed their final issue of the year with their new staff. Um, Executive Council just introduced the homecoming schedule outlined to the new class council officers. And just some other stuff is Irish dance off was yesterday. <laughs> and um, senior balls last weekend. That's it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Some excellent debut. Thank you very much. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, Board of Education. First, the Monroe County School Board Association committees. I've got labor relations first. The last meeting of the year, which I was unable to cover at the last update, uh, was um, it was actually very interesting. Uh, two or three states have started to um, administer parent bill of rights with regards to education. And uh, my attorney from Harris Beach, Steve Carlin, came and talked about that, what was in some of those bills of rights in different states. Um, and it was just very interesting, maybe a little bit disconcerting, but um, uh, a lot to sort of discuss and, and envelop there. So um, well done there. Information exchange. Information exchange, our last meeting was in April. So you guys are all we have nothing I know I missed really. the first meeting in May, so I might be catching up. Any, yeah. Anything else on legislative? Uh, legislative concluded as well in April. Got it. Bosies, I'll read a quick update from Mark Kokanovich, who was here just a minute Say ago. We made him stay. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Um, the uh, presentation and discussion updates to the Monroe One Code of Conduct for the 2023-2024 school year. Presentation and update on the school lunch budget for 23-24. Um, I will note here, Monroe One Bosies has will have hosted visits from seven of the ten component school districts this past school year. Um, I, ours was one of the three. Sorry about that. One of my jobs was to get that coordinated, so I sort of jumped on it for next year. Julene, you're welcome to you're welcome to join us. But we do have an appointment with um, BOCES the morning of November second. Kim has put that on your calendars already. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. So we will be going next year. They're doing some really great things over there. We have students over there, so excited to be able to go visit, even though it'll be in the next school year. Um, and then the hiring for the Monroe One Bosey's extended school year ESY program is going very well and ahead of the pace for uh, <coughs> last year. So that's Bosey's. Other board member reports. Eleanor, I'll start with you and we'll come this way. Um, I have nothing new to report okay. since our last one. Um, our, our last curriculum council meeting was uh, due to scheduling conflicts was uh, canceled as well as our um, school-based equity um, committee for the high school. Um, but the hiring practices committee did meet um, back in May, and I'm not quite sure if I've missed a meeting since then, but we did have a meeting. Um, um, Svetlana Stowell from Monroe One BOCES joined us and really uh, dove deep into um, anti-bias hiring practices um, and broke us up into groups and really made us dive deep into you know the many, the various biases that we all have and how we can tackle them, especially as far as hiring future staff um, and we learned quite a bit, so we're really excited to continue that work. Excellent. I think it's this Thursday, Lou? Yeah. This Thursday is the next hiring. Yes, Thursday, meeting. yes. Okay. Thank you. Karen. All right, I have three updates. Uh, we met with audit today. The audit committee comprised of Lou, Dahlia Watts, um, Larry, and Christina. Um, it is New York State mandate. The Comptroller requires that districts conduct annual internal audits. Um, so we hire an outside firm to do this. We met with their representative today. Um, there were no, we do have a, we did approve a cons uh, corrective action plan, but there were no significant findings. And I always attribute that to Lou Alimo, Dahlia Watts, and their incredible staff and their attention to detail. So uh, we appreciate that always. Uh, I sat with the um, committee today doing interviews for the assistant, the new assistant principal at Council Rock. Um, 
you know, again, credit to Lou and to Allison, uh, what a comprehensive, um, a comprehensive way we conduct our interviews with that committee. It's, it's, I always appreciate seeing that work and listening to our teachers and our staff and the, um, the things that they're looking for in their new colleagues. So thank you for that. <clears throat> and then as well, I, was, I had the ability, I had the opportunity rather, to sit on a panel um, for the Monroe County School Boards Association during their new member governance training this past Saturday. Uh, reviewing board roles and responsibilities. And what I enjoyed about that panel was that I was the only person who was not a board president on the panel. Mm -hmm. So I got to answer questions a lot. You should take that to your board president. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry Davis, for being my board president. <laughs> Anything else? That's it. Thank you very much. So, not an official board role, but a volunteer gig nonetheless. I got to go to play day at Council Rock and spend the entire day watching the whole school be outside, um, going from station to station in this wonderful event that they do every year. Um, just again, a shout out to Kristen Cooper and Max Krieger who make physical activity, you know, accessible and available to everyone. It was a great time was had by all. It was a wonderful experience. And then a shout out to the PTSA. I volunteered with them at the eighth grade bonfire night, another really successful event where the vast majority of students came. There was only a handful of students who didn't, who couldn't attend, um, and it really was a wonderful event that included everybody. It was great. That's great. Julie? I had one official meeting, which was the last Brighton Beliefs meeting of the year, and basically mm -hmm. we reviewed um, uh, the, um, it's not Brighton Beliefs, it's the cleanup day. Clean sweep. Clean sweep. Clean sweep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, a, lo a lot of committee members reported on different things that are happening in their in their line of work. Um, but I did lots of wonderful social things. Mm -hmm. The BTA's retirement party was uh, last week, their spring celebration, and that was wonderful. Several of us were there. Um, I got to go to Council Rock School to watch the most extraordinary Zoom instructor <laughs> teach the same thing 18 times in one day <laughs> and with a smile on her face and she was wonderful. Um, and I had another the alumni. Dinner. Oh, and we had the alumni. Oh, yeah. We had the alumni dinner, and um, that was a lovely evening. There were two tables of our high school students who were there, and um, it was fun to see them. And um, it would be really interesting to hear what they said about listening to these <laughs> alumni who are most of them. A couple of them were over 80 years old, and they really had incredible careers. So that was that was a fun fun event too. So it's really been a very social few days. And the last thing that I would like to report on is that um, Brighton Your Wardrobe is now located in the mm -hmm. in this building, and we are just getting set up. But if there's anybody in need, if you contact uh, the main switchboard here, they'll they will get in touch with us, and we will help you the best we can. We don't have a lot of inventory right now. But in the next few weeks, we will be sending out um, requests for the things that we know that we'll be needing. And um, going forward, we're going to be focusing on the needs of our students K-12. So we will not be accepting cocktail dresses for women my age. <laughs> um, but we, we um, are very excited about being able to better serve our school community. It's a, a nice note it was from you or from somebody just uh, thanking the building's team for the support in that movement. They were amazing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Um, all of the, the whole maintenance crew helped us move and they carried racks of clothing up the steps for us. They were just amazing. They got, they got to Brookside School at 5 to 9 and by 20 after 10 they were all done. We stopped to get bagels and cream cheese and half of them had gone back to their Aww. regular duties before we could even get upstairs with the bagels and cream cheese. So we were most appreciative. We couldn't have done it without them and they were just so kind and willing to do just anything that we needed done. So thank you to them. Christina. Um, so we had the last um, teacher center policy board meeting and so the budget was, uh, they made budget for next year's um, professional development for teachers. Uh, some new items on the grant for the next year was some money to support maker spaces, teachers to attend um, building mathematical classrooms, resources for year two and year three teachers in the K-12, I mean K through two. Um, grade level and then some uh, mentoring program uh, money as well so that stuff is new and then 
in this year's grant and also we talked a little bit more about standards for professional learning so that was a great meeting to know that those things are funded and teachers will have um, monies to um, do some work this summer and then um, I also have um, the New York State School Board Association's DEI meeting in this summer which will meet in person we meet once a year in person and we meet on zoom um, every every quarter and then uh, I'll also attend the New York State School Board Association's annual meeting great just two quick notes um, OACM um, owner architect construction manager meetings are construction meetings um, two things to note there's going to be the day after school ends a ton of construction at the French Road playground it will be shut down so a whole lot of people use it it's going to be great when it's done but that's a very well trafficked and which is great but not this summer for safety reasons we're going to shut that down and what will be presented hopefully at the end of the summer is an even better sort of playground so very excited about that I also make note of Discussions continue around the land we purchased from the church and how we can make the Brighton High School parking lot safer. And we'll be going to meet with the county at some point since Winton Road is a road that virtually every Brightonian passes at one point or the other. Nothing's imminent. There's no plans approved or presented, but that will be something to work through next year. So that one will be uh, needing a lot of visibility as well. And um, uh, my thanks to Catherine Liebel at TCMS. We have selected seven students to attend overnight camp at Camp Gorham, and they're all getting outfitted and everything else. So very excited about that. Nicole. Okay. Um, thank you, as always, for letting me share some of the great things that are happening. Um, so hopefully you were able to click on, click on that first link um, from Mrs. Granat who is part of an international music exchange project called Music Without Borders. So Mr. Koch's second grade class um, made a connection with um, the Amit School in Modi'in, Israel, and uh, she wanted to make sure that we thanked the Education Bridge Initiative established by the Jewish Federation of Greater Rochester um, and working on these joint activities together. Um, so that was awesome extended studies in kindergarten it took me a while to fi figure out why all the ducks were all around the building and so I was really grateful when this got submitted because it explained it so for the extended studies lessons Andrea Yaman pushes in and was teaching about the habits of mind using the toys that were part of the National Toy Hall of Fame inductees so they use dominoes to practice managing impulsivity, stretch silly putty to experience responding with wonderment and awe, teddy bears help to listen with understanding and empathy, and then they imagined and created a story about rubber ducks. So there's a link to the, one of the kindergarten's class rubber ducks story. Um, they constructed models of all the places where rubber ducks were around the school. They were everywhere. Um, and then they are, are generating stories these last few weeks of school. They drew a background. Um, and at the end of the year, each kindergartner will take home a rubber duck to play with. Um, just again, play is such a wonderful way to work on the habits of mind. And of course, many kindergartners shared that they have been to the Strong Museum of Play. Um, Mrs. Porta's class, her second grade class, as her end of the year presentation to parents, they decided to create readers' theaters, uh, readers' theater about fairy tales. So they um, worked on picking their own. That picking the story that they wanted to do, they planned, problem solved, figure out who was which character, they story mapped it, and then they used our awesome large motor room, which is at Council Rock, to create their sets. So each time that they perform it, and there's some wonderful pictures um, of the, there's one that's the three Billy Goats gruff, um, so you might be able to interpret which ones are which. Um, Little Red Riding Hoods down with the, the grandmother and the wolf. That one took me a few minutes. Um, but they are really just having a wonderful time doing it. And Eric Gruner came and recorded all of the plays that she's going to share with families on um, Friday for our picnic. She also, Mrs. Porta also had um, two presentations in her classroom. Um, so one was at she went to 
I'm gonna the RIT big presentation she took her own kids to do to, to go there and she met someone from the beekeeping club from the RIT beekeeping club which aligns with our science unit around pollination so she asked if she would come in and present she presented to two second grade classes so they were able to taste and compare honey that bees made in different seasons um, they explored real tools they got to see a hive with the frame, a honey extractor, a smoker, and then some fabulous photographs of them trying on the beekeeping suit and gloves. Mm -hmm. um, they made great connections. They also had um, Mrs. Merritt's ducklings come in. So she came in with um, one week old ducklings and a gosling and they learned about their life cycle, how to hatch them at home, and how to take care of them, and each student was able to hold one. So really great, great experiences for our kids. And we'll move on to Fraz. Um, lots of great science happening in all the buildings. Uh, Mrs. Harp uh, grew live algae from the Algae Academy, and they illustrated different types. They made PowerPoints, they, um, also sampled algae punch at the ice cream social. Um, that sounds interesting. They also <laughs> ta um, taught about um, toxic algaes. They created an AI generated poem about the wonders of algae. Algae, and then they also um, were able to participate in a simulation of a lakeside town. Um, so they did some real problem solving there. Fifth grade ESS students were researching how to advertise and educate school community um, about things that they could do within their community. Um, they used canva.com, and those are the words of Katie Covert saying she is so impressed with what they were able to do. So she sent quite a few of their amazing posters that they created. And fourth grade string players um, are gathered, a lot of string players, for their June 14th final concert, which is tomorrow. Um, we'll move on to TCMS. The TCMS Time published their first spring edition last week. There's a link to that. It's the first time that they have made a digi digital version of the school paper, and they wanted to make sure to um, thank Stacy Kugel and Daniel Edmonds. Um, 22 students meets every Thursday to brainstorm and create this. They wanted to appeal to uh, middle school student interests, but also promote com community awareness. Uh, Mrs. Lamphere, who also came to Council Rock, went to TCMS and presented to um, Mrs. Katsaitos' um, students. She shared information about the history of Brighton and students really wanted to know about their own neighborhoods. That was true in second grade also. Um, and in May, 43 seventh and eighth grade German students made the trip to Vermont. Um, you can see they made it to Ben and Jerry's for sure. Then they went to the Trap Lodge in Stowe. They were able to eat Austrian food, more maple syrup, more yummy sweet treats, maple syrup production. They um, went to the Trap Sugar Shack. They took a simulated Rhine cruise <coughs> on Lake Champlain, learned about Scottish Highland Candle and Vermont Teddy Bears. <laughs> and they had a great time, as you can see. Um, the East High School basketball coach, Norman Simmons, came to talk to the sixth graders in Mrs. Kansas' ELA classes. He shared his story of growing up in the inner city of Rochester and his um, encounters with racism, poverty, and gun violence. He spoke about his success graduating with college and obtaining his master's degree. Um, students were able to connect to this year's unit um, on social justice and determination, and Norman happened to be a student of Mrs. Kansas mm -hmm. when she taught at number nine school. Mm -hmm. um, at the high school, Mrs. Um, Claire's Magliocca and Hallahan's 10th grade global studies classes were able to have virtual visits with um, a group called 3GNY. It's a nonprofit uh, group that grandchildren of Holocaust survivors uh, made. It's a living link, and what they do is try and educate communities about the perils of intolerance and provide a forum for survivors.
or descendants of survivors. They were introduced to this at the New York State Social Studies Conference. This is the second year that they have been able to do it, and it's part of the unit on human rights violations. Mock trial team was presented with gavels um, for being the Monroe County champions, and Mastermind moved on to the second round of playoffs at St. John Fisher. BHS Brand Program wants to make sure to give shout outs to the May Solo Fest for um, participants. Um, so there's the uh, BHS students who attended the band and then the orchestra, a nice list. Um, this was pretty amazing. On May 23rd, the American Red Cross presented the BHS Red Cross Club with its Youth and Young Adults Volunteer Award. Um, recognizing it as the most active youth-led American Red Cross, Red Cross Club in Western New York. Um, they oversaw, the, art, the club actually oversaw the creation of 300 Heroes Comfort Kits for veterans, service members, and their families, um, which they put together during the Brighton Beliefs Day. They um, did a fundraiser at Spring Fest and are trying to raise awareness about all the services that the Red Cross have. Um, they have a summer blood drive planned for August 1st. They filmed their own video for it, and there's a link to that there for you. And the BHS Counseling Department held their second annual Senior Decision Day. They celebrated all seniors and future journeys, trades, employment, gap years, college, they had snacks, pictures, and created signs, and Bruno the Bruin is also in that picture. Um, in Mrs. Jesu's advanced drawing and painting class, they were outside trying uh, clean air painting. So they were able to receive a grant from the Nancy Beck Fund. They made their own watercolor pa uh, palettes from 3D printed templates. Huge thank you to Ms. Rumley. Um, each student was given a watercolor paper sketchbook, brushes that actually hold the water for painting, and then their palettes. And they went outside to observe the beauty outside and nature, and they will be able to take those materials home with them and practice more this summer. And you can see students outside enjoying that. And the AIM program has been focusing on monthly themes to encourage kindness, respect, and service to others. This month's theme was Making Bright and Beautiful. In April, they painted rocks. Then they took those to um, Brighton Town Park to hide the rocks. This month, um, students painted 48 flower pots. They took those to St. John's Nursing Home, and some of the upperclassmen delivered flowers. And you can see some amazing pictures of what they did. And then in May, AP Studio Art and Advanced Drawing and Painting students worked um, to on the four public works of art that are the utility boxes. Those were designed by past, past Brighton students, but reinterpreted by the current students. Um, so they collaborated with a Brighton tour uh, town board member Christopher Werner and the art department. They're going to be um, honored at a board meeting um, for their contributions to the town. And that was from Katie Malley and Sarah Jetsu. And there's a link to see all the traffic <coughs> boxes. Cool. Thank you. That was a lot. Thank you. It was a lot, but there's a lot going on. <laughs> Outstanding pictures as always. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, I think the peer is unavailable tonight, uh, Dr. McGowan. I just wanted to make a couple of uh, very quick comments. One, um, the seniors, uh, you can talk about a lot of events, but seniors um, <laughs> served losing track because it's almost 16 hours ago now. Yeah. Seniors yeah. Day <laughs> early and, uh, and, and spent time in the parking lot and on the field and uh, just overall having a wonderful day. And I want to thank the high school and Tom and uh, the assistant principal's Tom looks like he's napping, perhaps. Yes. Right now. Is it, you've been, up, you've been up early, both yeah. of you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just for making it a really special time. So just from a dad's perspective, too, being patient with our kids and supportive and helping them find joy in the last in the last of the lasts. They had a great time at the ball this weekend, yes. mm -hmm. and it's just been wonderful all the way around. So um, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, you know, we have graduation next week. Really excited for all of you to be there as well. We also have the Blueprint Thought Exchange out and uh, continue to look for feedback from uh, everybody on that also. So 
been a wonderful year. Thank you. And again, thank you to the high school for making the lasts for our kids uh, really wonderful as mm -hmm. today was the last day of classes. Do we have any commitments with regards to the weather next week at graduation? Mm -hmm. We are going to be sending out, we just actually talked about that, it's funny you mentioned that. As you can imagine, it's been on Dr. Hall's mind just a little bit, and uh, we are going to be sending our note out explaining to people the time frames for when the decision will be made in case we need to look at the rain date. But Probably it will have idea. to be, I will say, very miserable before we remove yeah. it because of the inconvenience that that causes. Yeah. Um, we do have turf on that field, so it is not like sitting in mud, I guess is the yep. point. It's a lot easier to be able to do that. So uh, we'll let everybody know. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, resolution, we've had uh, a discussion, but the resolution to approve uh, the new superintendent contract, we feel uh, very fortunate, Dr. McGowan, to have you as a leader in our district, and we had the opportunity, myself and Christina, to work on a revised contract, and have had a chance to discuss it with the team, and are ready to bring it forward for approval. Are there any questions from any of the board members? Motion to approve the superintendent contract as previously discussed. So moved. Moved by Julene. Second. Seconded by Kara. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It is approved. I feel deeply honored to continue to work with the kids and families of this district and to be your teammate. So I thank you very much for your kindness, your generosity, and your support. We appreciate the opportunity to work with you. Uh, consent agenda. A number of... Um, we have to approve the personnel changes at this point. My mind's getting okay, no. good. No. Um, we have a number of fundraising activities uh, that looks like great opportunities and gifts. As is our, as is our um, tradition, we will read the gifts out loud. A gift from the Brighton Education Fund in the amount of $2,994, excuse me, to fund a summer program for TCMS students to learn American Sign Language. A gift from Henry and Jill Grisham in the amount of $500 to fund the Hank Grisham Scholarship Fund. A gift from Dr. Kevin McGowan and Betsy McGowan in the amount of $500 to fund the Hank Grisham Scholarship Fund. A gift from the American Association of School Administrators, Inc. in the amount of $10,000 to be awarded to high school students in honor of Dr. Kevin McGowan being named 2023 Superintendent of the Year. A grant from the Rochester Area Community Foundation in the amount of $1,750 to the Brighton Central School District made possible through the David L. Beato Memorial Scholarship Fund from donor Ms. Beth Ann Beato. A grant from the Rochester Area Community Foundation in the amount of $1,750 to the Brighton Central School District made possible through the David L. Beato Memorial Scholarship Fund from donor Mr. Louis J. Beato. Just some really wonderfully generous people there. Um, I just want to make one comment. Please. Uh, I was able to say this, uh, Christine heard me talk about this, but at the Senior Awards Assembly, the, um, the person mentioned at the beginning, Hank Grishman, uh, is the superintendent of Jericho, a very, very successful district downstate, and he is uh, somewhat of a legend, as he's been a superintendent for 40 some years. Legend or needs to be committed or something, but he's an incredible guy. <laughs> very very deep thinker thoughtful person and somebody that many of us look up to i've had the chance to work with hank quite a bit we talk often about our districts and compare notes and hank often admires the work that is is done here and, and uh, speaks very uh, glowingly about that i just want to point it out because he's a it's really interesting what he's decided to do he's a former superintendent of the year who's established the scholarship and we're the first district to be able to award that in the district of the superintendent's chosen and so between that and AASA, uh, three students were able to have some of their financial need, unmet need, uh, met, and uh, really excited for those kids. And really, I think the irony or interesting aspect of that award that I think is frankly reflective of the work that's done by everybody here, but are the achievement of our kids, now gets to support several of our kids in that. And mm -hmm. I think that's a really cool thing. So just want to thank Corbridge, uh, first student, but Hank and his family for their generosity as well. I apologize. I said that name incorrectly. It's Hank Grishman. I apologize. No, that's all right. That's, that's an official uh, way of listing it. So. Motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Moved by Eleanor. Second. Seconded by Susan. All those in favor? Aye. It seems appropriate <laughs> to call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved Second. by Julene. <laughs> Seconded by Christina. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <clears throat>
This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education.